Okay, this lesson is for the second day of Max and Min's. Um, we're going to go through a couple tougher example problems, and then tomorrow, if you have any questions or concerns about doing any of these pro types of problems, make sure you ask in class. Okay, so um, question number one says a can in the shape of a right cylinder is required to have a volume of 500 centimeters. So I'm going to draw this first and um, label what I know. So the volume of this shape is going to be given by the area of the base, which is pi r squared, multiplied by its height. So pi r squared h is going to be um, my constraint because it's equal to 500. So pi r squared h, the volume, should equal 500. Um, the top and the bottom are made of a material that costs 6 cents per square centimeter, while the sides are made of a material that costs 4 cents per square centimeter. We're going to express the total cost of the material as a function of the radius of the cylinder. Okay, so we're supposed to explain the total cost of this in terms of r, so we're trying to write this function here. Now, in order to talk about the material that this you know, shape is actually made out of, we want to discuss the surface area of this shape. Okay, the surface area is going to dictate how much material you actually end up using, and when, then therefore the cost, since it's per square centimeter. Okay, so now surface area of this shape is going to be given by pi r squared times 2, because there are two circles. And then the area of your um, lateral shape here, remember it's a rectangle, just wrapped around the circle, which means that one of the dimensions of that rectangle has to be the circumference, since it's wrapped around the circle. Then the other dimension is just your height. So you have 2 pi r h for the area of this rectangle. All right, now the cost for the bottoms, which is given by this particular portion of your, um, your function here, is going to be charged 6 cents per square centimeter. So I'm going to write that as 0 0.06 and multiply that by however much area I have for the bases, the two circles. Then this portion here is going to dictate the amount of material I need for the side, and the side is made out of the 4 cent uh, material, so I'm going to use 0 0.04 times 2 pi r h. Okay, now this function is going to give me the cost, so I want to rewrite this up here, 2 pi r squared plus 0 0.04 times 2 pi r h. Okay, now looking at this, it's almost all in terms of r, right? The only thing is that I have this h that I need to get rid of. So I go back to my constraint. My constraint here allows me to solve for h so that I can substitute that in. So if I solve for h here, now I can plug in this value for h. So when I do that, now my function 0.06 times 2 pi r squared plus 0.04 times 2 pi r times uh, 500 over pi r squared. All right, now I'm going to work on simplifying this. So I have cost in terms of the radius is equal to 0.12 times pi r squared plus Let's see, this is going to be 1,000 times 0.04, so 400, or sorry, 40, over, since the pi's will cancel, and one of these r's will cancel, 40 over r. So this is your function um, with respect to the radius of the cylinder, okay? Now, the next portion of this um, is usually to find the minimum. Now, if you look at this, it kind of looks like a quadratic, but it's actually not. This is 40 to, times r to the negative first power. So this actually is not a quadratic function, and we don't have any type of um, algorithm for solving this type of problem yet. That's something that you guys are going to do in calculus when you want to calculate that algebraically. So what I've done is actually um, graph this using a calculator. Um, and then on your calculator, I'd like to show you guys how to find your max or your min. 
Okay, so here I already have the function typed into my calculator, um, and I'm going to go and ahead and um, hit graph on this. I have the window um, in our standard window. So when I'm looking at this function, it looks like a linear function. I know that this is definitely not linear. Um, so what I want to do is zoom out. Now, again, this is like a real world model problem, so you really shouldn't have any inputs that are negative or any outputs that are negative because we're dealing with radius and cost. So both of those things are not going to be you know in terms of any negative numbers so I'm gonna zoom out on this and now I'm gonna be able to see my function look a little bit more like this graph that I showed you here now I, I altered the um, you know your your domain here for this so that it, it gives a nice curve so this curve here is the same curve over here it's just not in a very nice viewing um, screen but that's okay now we just want to calculate the minimum. So basically this whole side of the function here is not part of the real world um, scenario that we're dealing with. We want to have a positive value for our radius. Okay, so that would be in this first quadrant over here. So I'm going to find the minimum of that graph by hitting second calc and going down to minimum. And then when it asks me left bound and right bound, I'm going to find where that uh, minimum I think is and go to the left of it hit enter, go to the right of where I think that minimum is, hit enter, and then it's going to spit out the minimum. So my minimum here occurs at um, when you have a radius of 3.75 centimeters and that cost would be fifteen point nine seven dollars. Okay, um, because we used cents in here and we we entered that as 0.06, or well, actually I used dollars and I entered that as 0.06 to represent cents. So this right here represents fifteen point nine seven dollars. So again, because um, if I write on this it's going to disappear and I'll probably forget the coordinate. So we have a radius of three point seven six and um, a minimum cost of fifteen point nine seven. Okay, so if I were to answer that in a sentence I would say um, the minimum cost is fifteen point nine seven dollars um, when the radius is three point I already forgot what it was I think it was seven five or seven six or something okay so that's when you don't necessarily know how to find the um, you know the max or the min of the function that you're given okay if it's a quadratic or a quadratic like function we've already studied how to do that like I said this is something that you're not going to be able to do until probably next year in calculus okay all right now in number two it says a rain gutter is to be made of aluminum sheets that are 12 inches wide by turning up the edges by 90 degrees what depth will provide maximum cross-sectional area and allow the most water to flow so we're trying to find a maximum here okay and um, if you look at your picture, hopefully this is making sense to you, the entire sheet of aluminum was 12 inches. Then you turned this part upright, this 90 degree angle here, and this 90 degree angle here to form the gutter shape. So that means that if both pieces are the same um, height, then this section inside here is 12 minus 2x, the original piece minus both x values here. All right, now, if we want to um, figure out the cross-sectional area, the area of this shape, since it's a rectangle, I only have to worry about this um, shape here, this rectangle, and this is x by 12 minus 2x. So they actually already um, drew out this picture for me. If I were to give this problem in a homework question or on a test or a quiz, the, the graph would not be provided, or that, that um, sketch wouldn't be provided, so you'd have to understand you're bending a piece you know, upright and then how to create that, that same sketch. Um, so we actually, it's kind of easy, we can just use x times for the area, x times 12 minus 2x. This is going to give you the area in terms of um, the uh, width of that, that piece. Okay? Um, so let's find that and simplify it. So we have 12x minus 2x squared. We're going to find the minimum of this function, or I'm sorry, the maximum of that function because it does open down and also we're trying to find the maximum area. So I take opposite of b over 2a. Oops, I'm not doing exactly what I was about to tell you not to do. Um, so this is negative 12, 2x squared plus 12x. So just make sure you rewrite the order if it's not in standard form. So you have um, opposite of b over 2a, 
and you're going to get positive 3. So now you're going to input a of 3 here. So if I plug in 3, I get uh, negative 18 plus 36 or 18. So that means that the, um, the max area here, so the max area is 18, uh, it's not centimeters, it is square inches. So 18 square inches, and the dimensions that will allow that maximum cross area is when x is 3. So if we look at our original box here, it'll be 3 by 3 by 6, or I should say 3 by 6. Okay, and this is the answer to question 2. Sorry, I don't know why I included that last by 3. This is just 3 by 6, so this is the dimensions of that rectangle that will allow the most um, water flow. Okay, now in question 3, um, you have a liquid storage container on a truck is in the shape of a cylinder with hemispheres on each end. The cylinders and hemispheres have the same radius. We're going to determine the volume as a function of the radius. So volume as a function of radius. And notice that they didn't actually tell us um, in the problem any constraint. They just drew a diagram for us. So we have a constraint here, um, which we're going to talk about in a second. But they didn't tell us explicitly what it was. They just provided a picture for us. OK, I would like to start with our um, constraint here. Since we have this 140 is the, the total length here, I know that uh, this is also the second segment here is also x. And the segment here is x as well. And although I don't know what the height of the overall cylinder is, I'm just going to call that h. So I know that x plus x, so 2x plus h should equal 140. So there's my constraint using the picture. Now, we're supposed to determine volume as a function of the radius. So let's just discuss what volume is. So the volume of this, um, um, I guess, cylinder slash sphere thing I don't know what you would call this little shape, but um, the volume of this in terms of the radius, which is labeled x, is going to be the two hemispheres here, which is going to have a total uh, volume of 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this is a, a volume formula for a whole sphere, which we would give you on um, the test and quiz. Um, and then you're going to add to that the volume of your cylinder, which is going to be pi r squared, the area of the base, times the height. So everything here can be written in terms of x except for right now h because I know that the radius here is x so I'm just going to replace that with whoops, x cubed here and x squared okay now the only thing left to replace is that height right here so I'm going to solve for h here and I get negative 2x plus 140 and now if I want to rewrite the volume is a function of the radius. I have 4 thirds pi x cubed plus pi x squared times negative 2x plus 140. Now I want to um, work on this time actually simplifying this function and making it a little bit cleaner of an answer. So when I notice that I have x cubed here and then if I distribute it here I would get another x cubed I want to make sure that I'm rewriting this in terms of you know simplifying uh, my like terms so I can simplify pi x cubed so I'm gonna do that um, so I have 4 thirds pi x cubed uh, minus 2 pi x cubed plus 140 pi x squared and now I can simplify here so 4 thirds pi minus 2 pi is going to be negative 2 thirds pi x cubed and that plus 140 pi x squared cannot be uh, combined and this would be my final function written nice and clean okay All right that's the end of the lesson nice job